Hi everyone, it's Maria Recruit here. Um, it is uh, Wednesday, Jan <laughs> June, not January, June the 10th, 2020. And uh, we're still in the um, COVID-19 pandemic. They're just starting to free things up a little bit. And I have as my guest, um, Howard Tavrogis. How are you today? I am awesome. How are you? <laughs> nice to have you back. So Thanks. today's topic is how to not get your end form thrown out at the LTB, which is a land and tenant board. Just think about this. You've had someone live in your home for, let's say, a month, two months, 10 months, whatever, and you go to the land and tenant board and your forms get thrown out. Do you really think it's not worth spending your money finding a professional, a paralegal or a lawyer who will fill out the form properly so you will at least get your case heard? I think that's one of the silliest things for you to do as an investor, not spend money to make sure that you will, you know, you can uh, vacate your home from a tenant that's not paying. Don't you agree, Howard? Absolutely. Actually, I'll, I'll tell a quick, quick story. So. Mm -hmm. As, as some of your listeners may be familiar, I worked for Legal Aid for eight years prior to going to private practice six and a half years ago, so 14 okay. and a half years experience. Yeah. So when I was with Legal Aid Ontario at a legal clinic, I was tenant duty counsel for six of those years, which means I saw literally like 15,000 cases in the time I was doing it. The most common error that landlords make are with the N4 notice, which we're gonna go over. But mm -hmm. I remember one particular uh, instance, well, not one particular instance, but one particular landlord who had more money than he knew what to do with in 12 yeah. lifetimes. And that's usually what happens. And I'm not saying that people should spend money, but the thing is, as you said, get proper advice, fill yes. it properly. This gentleman was there time and time again, like oh. a, frequent, a frequent flyer. And which means he was probably not a good landlord to start off with. If he was there of course, of course. But a lot of the adjudicators, the judges would say to him, you know, your N4 is wrong. You're going to have to start all over. Yeah. We got to the point that one adjudicator, I'm not going to name names at, at that no. point. This was like probably like seven, eight years ago, said to him, hey, look, you know what? You're spending more time, energy, and losing more and more rent. The amount of rent that you're losing, why yeah. don't you go out and hire professionals to do your forms? I'm not spending the money. And he actually periodically would come to my office, knock on the door and say, look, can you help me? And I go, and at that time I was representing the dentist and I go, I'm on the other side. Like, <laughs> I can't help you. I mean, and I said, take the adjudicator's advice, hire somebody. And he yes. kept saying, I'm not going to spend the money. And you know what? My father used to have an expression, uh, penny wise, pound foolish. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Which is true. Which is Absolutely. true. If you don't want to spend whatever it costs to get somebody to look over your forms, and I'm not advocating for mm -hmm. myself, but somebody that at least has an expertise in it, you know, and your rent is fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month, and you say, Oh, I gotta spend two, three hundred dollars, whatever it might be. That's not too smart. I don't want to use the word stupid, no. but it's, yeah. it's not too smart. So so that's the most common thing that happens at the board. As you had mentioned at the beginning, people, you know, the N4, which is the most common application, which is the L1 application at the board. So mm -hmm. pull out the N4 and we'll go through the process in a second. Yes. Then, yes. It, then the next process is the L1. The L1 is heard at the board. Mm -hmm. If people have attended the landlord and tenant board and they look at the uh, the docket on that day, which is the list of cases that day, 85 to 90 percent of the cases at the board are L1 applications based on arrears. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you want to make sure you get it right, because especially at this time, yeah. Or at any time, but at this time, because there's such a long queue to get a hearing at the board to get this. If you if you get it wrong, let's say you know you file your application, your hearing's not, God know when's when's it's going to be. But you know if it's you know three, four, five, six months from now, you get to the board, the adjudicator calls you out at the beginning of the hearing block and says, oh, da da da, here's you. Here's your N4. It's faulty. We may be able to convert it into what they call an L9 application, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means. You get the arrears, but you won't get the eviction. So, okay. if, you know, if all you're looking for is the money, well, that's the L9. But if you're doing the L1, it means you want an eviction on top of just mm -hmm. getting the arrears, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's the important thing. So if you'd like, I can start going through the application. No, right? I just want to say something before. Sure. Sure. Uh, 
I think, uh, and what I'm noticing, I've been watching a lot of groups. I'm on a lot of Facebook groups where you have the landlords on there and the tenants on there. And you're right. It's always because they're not paying their rent, right. which as an owner, people have to pay you rent. How can you pay your mortgage? How can you pay your own expenses? Exactly. And if you as a business person, because once you go into becoming a landlord, you are technically a business person, even if you don't know it, whether it's one house, whether it's two or whatever else, if you can't take the time to study and learn your art because this is an art and this is a business then why are you even in the business is it for the money forget about it yeah. you're not going to make any money at the beginning yeah yeah, yeah. Have to make many many years yeah. um and and i really feel that people have to take the time like when i started 20 years ago i i would go and attend courses all the time attend associations Howard. i would meet with other landlords that i could see were in the business much longer and sit down with them buy them a coffee buy them dinner whatever and get their forms from them and ask them the proper questions because being a business person and i'm new at it and i had a mentor on top of it right that could help me through right. you need to pay for your education otherwise they're paying for the education coming through you and and also like this landlord that you're talking about how silly is that how, yeah, exactly. how many times do you have to go back and the same person says the same yeah. thing for you yeah, exactly like it's crazy exactly. exactly i mean and and is you're right i mean it you do need to get yourself educated because if you want to make your business profitable, yes. it's like two business you're going to. Landlording is one business, you know. Yeah. If you're making, you know, cars. It's another business. I'm not comparing the two, but it's the same idea. It's a business. You run it like a business. You got to learn the stuff. And and to your point, also a lot of adjudicators I've heard will actually turn around and say to people because their excuses. Well, I don't know. It's my first time at the board, and they'll be like, "Well, it's a business." Yeah. You know, it's not my problem that you don't know what to do yeah. as far as the forms. You should have learned about it before. And, you know, yes. they're always, well, the tenants get free legal advice. I don't get advice. Well, yeah. that's the way it is. You got to do it. I mean. Yeah. And unfortunately, the system is against us as landlords. The correct. system's not for us. The system yeah. is for the tenants. Correct. And so we that we put our own money in there. Right. We spend time fixing up the place, searching for it, buy it. And then in the middle, like you buy and you sell is really easy in the business, but it's in between how do you manage your cash flow or your tenants or whatever else. This is where it breaks you or makes you. Absolutely. And if you're not going to learn that part, if you're not going to go for landlording 101 and yeah. understand what that's all about, then get a property manager that yeah. knows what they're doing. Again, make sure it's a good property manager. Or if you get into trouble, then go to a paralegal because some people don't even know about that. Right. They don't realize you need a paralegal to help you out. But again, get educated. Read the Landlord and Tenant Board Act, first of all. Yeah. And the residential tenancy act before you even touch or even want to go to purchasing, and you'll see that that your enthusiasm is going to be deflated by this much, which is what it should be. Right. And you should be very cautious. Right. It's very dangerous now, Howard, to have a property because, as you know, you were mentioning last week to our listeners that you've had some people, landlords, that have had people in there not paying for ten months. Exactly. Ten months. Yeah. What's that all about? What kind of business model is that? Yeah, exactly. And 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 I do a lot of uh, well before COVID. I mean, still I still do stuff on Zoom, mm -hmm. and I tell people the absolute truth. I mean, they yes. feel like, oh my God, you're so negative. I'm not negative. I'm being oh, it's the like, truth. I could say I could be like those infomercials. Oh my yeah. God, they're gonna pay the mortgage. You're gonna be <laughs> fine. Everything's gonna be wonderful. No money down. You're gonna. Yeah. Oh my God, within a couple of years, you could be a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't that way. It's a tough uh, work job yeah. that you have to you have to be on top of it as a business person all yeah. the time. Even if you give it to a property manager, you still have to ask the property manager what he's doing, and you have to be educated to know what kind of questions you ask. You know, so for them, yeah, these are so stupid. These infomercials makes me so angry. And now, especially with this downtime, you see all these so-called gurus, twenty years old. 19 years old, a millionaire. Yeah. Give me a break. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come yeah, on, yeah, you know, yeah. like you're making fun of even this business. And if you're not willing to do the work, you shouldn't be in the real estate business. It's not for everyone. And now with the way the laws are, not only in Canada, but the USA, in England, in Australia, yeah. that people can squat on your properties for years. There's people that have people who are squatting yeah. for years. What kind of business is that? Look at the business model. That, that's not a good business model. And, and, do a fix and flip, change around, do a yeah. fix and flip instead, do a rent to own instead, right? Don't go into having tenants if you don't know how to handle them and you don't know how to choose them and spend money on your education. Exactly. Absolutely. The only reason I've stayed out of trouble, Howard, is I study and read and talk to other people and go go to meetings where we, we share the information. It's not because I just it just came to me. I have put 20 years of hard knocks as being a landlord, as being a homeowner to understand what's going on. That does that didn't happen overnight. No. S same idea like when you go to a doctor's like so I don't see any diplomas on your wall. Well, you know, before you came in, I watched a couple of YouTube videos. I okay. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, like, please, please, yeah. you know. So let's start with the end for Howard, because I know you're going to be coming week after week. Yeah. We're going to be discussing the different forms. And today, which is the basis of everything, is the right. end form. Yeah. Can you go over it very, very slowly? Yeah, and you I know what? Let us see the potholes of what can happen. Okay? And I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to upload documents. And everybody can go to the Landlord and Tenant website. So I'm going to just show it this way. Yeah. So sure. the first one we're going to look at, I get my fingers straight, is the right. here, two, and it says tenants' names. And the big thing is it says include all tenants' names. Okay. What does that mean? Yes. Because that's another one of Good the points. Good point. Okay. Good point. So, who is a tenant? It's somebody who has signed your tenancy agreement, your lease. Yes. It's not all the occupants. It's not their children, the people that are under 18 years of age. It's whoever signed the lease. Because a lot of times people have like a whole bunch of names in their lease. Yes. Yes. And you should check the last page or whatever page it's on with the new mm -hmm. Ontario lease. We'll just call it the last page. Who signed the lease? Mm -hmm. They are the tenants. Okay. They are the ones that get this. So as you know, in there, you put the name Bob Smith. And mm -hmm. let me put it this way, because it's another common error error that people say, okay, husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Bob Smith. Okay, I, I had an adjudicator, one of my favorites. Again, I'm not going to name names. Mm -hmm. He was he educated me, same idea, when I was tenant duty counsel. Sure. I would sit in and watch, and I would listen to what goes on. And he was great with all his phrases and stuff. And he says, okay, if it's a husband and wife, unless they're Siamese twins and they're joined at the hip, they're not one person. So it's Bob Smith, comma, Mary Smith. Okay, good. That's, good point. That's, that's good point. And the other thing you got to remember with this N4 notice which again, a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. Each person, each tenant has to get a copy, serve the copy of this okay. and for notice or any notice. And the thing is, it's not like, you know, Bob Smith is on one and Mary Smith is on the other. Mm -hmm. It's just Bob Smith, Mary Smith. So in separate envelopes, Bob Smith gets one and Mary Smith gets another. That's number okay. one. The Good next point. Next spot where it says, okay, can I just stop now? Yeah, this sure. is why when you're going to have, let's say a couple come in, right. um, you should get uh, credit reports on the husband and the wife. Correct. Yeah, and you make sure that they're both because otherwise they can stay there and squat yes. once the other person leaves and they get divorced or whatever. So you need to make sure what I do is if any, any adult that's going to live on that property, they have to sign the lease and they also have to give me their credit bureau report and I do a check on all of them. So that's how you stop people from squatting on your property is yeah. they know right up from front that you're not going to fool around with them. Right, right. So I'm going to say that's enough for me. Go ahead, Howard. And they don't have to, and, and it could be common law. It doesn't have to be the same last yes. name. That's a that's good point. But also the other thing, if they do break up and it happens a lot, yes. it yes. happens a lot, you know, Bob moves out. And Mary contacts you and says, oh, Bob moved out. Well, yeah. Bob's going to still be responsible for the rent because I'm not taking him off the lease. Yeah. Oh, no, but he's a, and then Bob contacts me and says, I don't live there anymore. Well, that's nice. You're still on the lease. It's yeah. like you co-sign a car loan. Same idea. That's right. Same right. thing. Good point. Good point, yeah. Howard. Okay. So next next spot. Mm -hmm. Landlord's name. And again, mm -hmm. I'm sorry where my fingers are, but right here, landlord's name. Yeah. So also an important thing. Is it? A corporation is it two people you own it by yourself like is it maria by yourself or you know is it maria and you you know you happen to own it with bob and john and three other people all the names have to be listed there okay 
when we get to the end of it, not all people have to sign it, but at least all the names or the corporation. And if, you know, Maria, you have, you know, limited corporation that mm -hmm. owns this property, it, that you can sign for the corporation. So as long as the person who signs for the corporation, mm -hmm. so that, that goes in that spot. Next spot. This is really, really, really important. Okay. I can say the address of the rental unit. Probably one of the most common mistakes that people make. Because yes. <laughs> did they rent the whole house? Did they rent upstairs? Did they rent downstairs? Did mm -hmm. they rent unit one? Did they rent unit two? And if people have a boarding house or a rooming house, yes. whatever you want to call it, you got to make sure each room in that place has got a number on it. It could be one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. Again, same adjudicator, great advice. Because they say, you know, one, two, three, Main Street, you know, Barry, Ontario, whatever it is. Well, you know, they come to the board, get there. Well, no, he's in the upstairs, gets thrown out. They're in the downstairs, gets thrown out. And the, ba the way to visualize this is, let's say you get to the point that you have to get the sheriff. So the sheriff, and let's say you have five tenants in the unit, five different rooms. The sheriff comes there and he says, well, the rooms are uh, designated. I'm going to evict everybody that lives there. And if the landlord lives there, that includes the landlord too if they live upstairs. So <laughs> you got to make sure... Because so it's going to be thrown out on that basis. So it's okay. really, really, and if you know before you do this, it's like a pardon my language, no oh shit moment. Mm -hmm. It's like <laughs> oh my god, I don't have the rooms numbered. Okay, before you do this, go there. Mm -hmm. Get go to you know, I'm not going to say a dollar store, but go to like Home Depot. Make sure that mm -hmm. the stickers work. Go and put a sticker on each of the door, and, be, and before you leave. You know, give the proper notice of entry and stuff. We can talk about that later in a, another show. But at least twenty four hours and put put it on the doors, and uh, you, you uh, make sure that you take a picture of each door because yes, all the time, yes. tenants it's tear it off. off. They take yeah. it off, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, absolutely. You it's never there. So it, it's really important. Again, it doesn't have to be A, B, but however you want to designate it, mm -hmm. and that's the way that they get their meal also. That's really, yes. really, really important. Mm -hmm. Good point. Next one. How much money do they owe? It says, I am giving you this notice because I believe you owe me mucho dinero, lots of money, <laughs> right? And it's the amount of money, which we'll get to on page two, that's the amount that they owe right now. So, you know, if they owe one month's rent or one and a half month's rent, so if it's 1200 they owe one and a half months, so it's 1800 that figure goes there. That's really, really important. Okay. Everything I'm telling you is really important. Of course it is. <laughs> and pay this amount by. Again, I'm sure. Okay. And everybody can go on the LTB website and download. Mm -hmm. Of course they will. They have to. <laughs> pay this amount by. That means when the day that you serve it, there's two different ways of calculating. They call 14 days and 19 days. So mm -hmm. what is 14 days? 14 days. And again, another form that you should download is the certificate of service. It tells you different ways to serve the document. Okay. Don't be creative and come up with your own way to serve a document because if it's not served properly, that's another way this gets thrown out. Mm -hmm. So, so you pay by, let's say you knock on the door, you go to the rental unit and Maria's there. I hand you this. And, you, and so it's that date is supposed to be 14 days after the day that you serve it, not the day that you sign it on page two. But mm -hmm. I always recommend this. If it's 14 days, make it 16 days. And the 19 days, which I'm going to get to in a second, mm -hmm. make it 21 days. Add on a couple of days. Because if they're not mm -hmm. paying 14, they're not going to pay in 16. If they're not paying in 19, they're not, not going to pay in 21. So what is the 14 and 19? So personal service, which I just explained to you. Mm -hmm. In an external mailbox, like the ones in the old style houses, sitting outside the mailbox. Mm -hmm. That's you can serve it as long as they get their mail there, serve it to there underneath the door of the rental unit. So, if it's under that, a lot of times it's difficult to do that, and it doesn't mean in between the screen door and mm -hmm. that door. And no, it's under you can actually have to push it under. And if there's no room there, you can't do it that way. Yeah, okay, you can't tape it to the door. A lot of people tape it to the door, okay, they, they just kind of like leave it there or they send. Send it by email. You can't send it by email. You can't send it by text. These are the ways set by the board. Other ways to serve it mm -hmm. via mail, via courier. That's another way of serving it. When people say, oh, I'm going to serve it via courier because a registered mail. You know what? 
save yourself a few bucks. Mm -hmm. Just put the stamp on the outside of the envelope, serve it regular meal. It's considered served under the legislation within five days. So that's why they have the difference between 14 and 19. So they add on the five days to that service. So if you're not in the same area, if you don't know when the tenants could be home, et cetera, you know what, just mail it. And another suggestion that I always, always mm -hmm. recommend when you're mailing it, when you're serving it, if you're serving a mailbox, etc., take a picture. Yeah, exactly. Take yeah. a picture with your phone. I yeah. serve it. And when I put it in the mailbox, because sometimes I serve for mm -hmm. my clients, yeah. and I, I take a picture of me. I'm walking Toby. I'm going. I'm passing the mailbox. I take a picture of me putting the envelope. You can visibly see the name. It says, you know, cannibal. Even if mm -hmm. it's one of the community mailboxes, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's considered that's the day that you do it. So you make it. Like I say, add on a couple of days for personal yeah. service, add on a couple of days for, you know, mail service. Same idea. You got to, as we talked about before, the amount of tenants. So if, you know, there's three tenants there, you know, five students, whatever, they're all in the same lease, yes. however it is, you have to send five separate ones, which means, I'm sorry to say, you have mm -hmm. five different stamps, and five different envelopes, each mm -hmm. that's all their names appear on it. That's page one. Okay, hey. I'm just going to stop now. Okay, so let's just go. The proper way of service of notice would be put it in the mailbox, take a photograph, or have someone come and follow you, and they take a picture of you dropping it in the mailbox. Yeah. It does, okay. The other way is to put it underneath the door. Again, have someone make sure they take a photo of you doing that. Or send it by regular mail. Again, take a photo of it that you've actually done it, it because it shows the timestamp. Yeah. Now, yeah. I have a question for you. So, yeah. so let's say I filled out the, the paperwork, okay, mm -hmm. and I wait until the next day to post it or whatever else okay do i i i only put the date i should wait and not put the date until i've actually done something with it so i put the date if it's the next day and then 14 days or 19 days from the day that i serve it Absolutely. okay okay the you sign it unless the date that you sign is the day that you serve it so okay. of course, and you don't have to necessarily take somebody with you because i mm -hmm. you know, i bring my phone with me mm -hmm. everybody they Forget their purses and their wallets now, but they don't forget their phone, right? Like, oh my God, where's my phone, right? So, uh -huh. so the camera. And I'm not saying, you know, when you hand it to the person, say cheese, whatever, you just take yeah. a picture of the house that day. But yeah. it seems to be the same idea when you put it in the, the mailbox, mm -hmm. have it sticking out of the mailbox, take a yeah. picture of your phone, yeah. the one or two or three envelopes sitting there. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, you can't, I mean, I'm not tech savvy enough to put the info up during our conversation, there's yes. no way that I can manipulate an Apple phone to change the date on it. <laughs> I'll vouch for you, Howard. I'll vouch for you. <laughs> it's impossible. So I'll, and that's you may never need to use it, mm -hmm. right? But it's happened to me a couple of times at the board that the tenants said, you know, using profane language and saying he's an effing liar or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Number one, I'm not going to lose my law license to lie yeah. to the adjudicator yeah. for some yeah. one case. Yeah. yeah. So you know what? Let me get my phone out. I take a picture and I have it in my photos and I show the adjudicator. And I go, look, this is when it was served. Here's my, yeah. and and it it just kind of, and sometimes you forget. Let's say you have a whole bunch of properties mm -hmm. and you know, you forget when you did it, right? And it comes back and says, oh, did you serve it within this period of time? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's okay. right. use the phone, use the phone. Okay, so then you do the N4 and then you say the L11 is done at the same no, no. time. No, 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 no. The, okay. no. So, as far as that date, so if the tenant within that 14 days mm -hmm. paid the full amount of rent on there, okay, say it was $2,000, I'll just use that as an example, and you actually served it, uh, let's say today's the 20th of June. Mm -hmm. Well, the 14 days now passes the month of July, and this is an important point to remember too, mm -hmm. that, and let's say your rent is, hopefully your rent is due on the first, and we'll get to that in a second yeah. with page yeah. two. So. If your rent is due on the first and you know july first passes and july 2nd so the actual termination date now is you know 14 or 21 days or 19 or 20 sorry 16 or 21 days later it's now july 10th or whatever date it is well that total is not that they owe two thousand mm -hmm. and let's say your rent is two thousand they now owe you four thousand so if they haven't paid that full amount of two thousand, let's say by the end of June they pay you nineteen hundred and ninety-nine dollars, that N four is still alive. 
Okay. The document okay. that doesn't die is still alive. So that dollar carries over into July. Okay. And and you can proceed with the next step, which is the L1 application. So okay. if it's if it's let's say 14 days, I'll just use that as an example, 14 days. And it actually explains to you as early as the 15th day, mm -hmm. you can file with an L1 application to okay. start the inspection process at the board. And you and I always recommend to landlords because it's the easiest way you can e-file this as long yeah. as it's just in 4l1 it's easy to e-file you just upload your n4 and your certificate of service which, certificate of service that, that's what i meant certificate of service yeah. they get that off they get that off the website correct and what does such a certificate of service mean i'm sorry i made a mistake no, no, got, no so certificate of service is basically you verifying or whoever served it it mm -hmm. doesn't even though you sign as a landlord and you get your daughter to do it for you, you get a friend to do it for you, that's yeah. fine. They okay. can't sign the end for it. It can only be served by a, signed by a landlord or okay. signed by a, a legal representative. Okay. So, so perhaps perhaps a lot of people, when they serve the N4, forget about, continue with the certificate of service. Have you yes. found that happening? You're going to find out anyways. You're going to find out you need it anyways. Okay. And you don't need to do it the same day. You don't have to okay. fill out the certificate okay. of service the same day. You can download it the next day, whatever, okay. sign it, whatever, that, you know, when you're getting your paperwork together. Because those two forms, the N4 okay. and the certificate of service, okay. is what you need when you file the L1 application to the board. Okay, so what do we do with the certificate of service then? Do we send that via email? Do we drop it off at the office? No, no. What do we do? No, okay, no. So the N4 and the certificate of service are married to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. You file the L1 application, it goes along with it. Now, sometimes you forget to send in the certificate of service. That's mm -hmm. not, not a deal breaker. And even, and I'm not telling people to do this, but even mm -hmm. on the day of the hearing, the adjudicator may mention to you, oh, by the way, your certificate of service wasn't included with the package. Uh, you know, we need that document. You can bring it with you. I suggest don't do that. But if mm -hmm. for whatever reason you forget, yeah, and, or, or you're uploading your documents online, and again, this is a tech thing that your file's too big or whatever, it can't upload it. Same mm -hmm. time, sometimes with the N4, you can't reduce the size of it. It mm -hmm. tells you that within five days, that you need to submit these uh, documents to the landlord and tenant board to attach to your L1 application. Otherwise, they're going to, which is crazy, they're going to dismiss your application. So you spend mm -hmm. 175 or 190. Yeah. yeah. And they'll dismiss it, and you have to start all over again. So you can you can send it in two ways. You can send it in either email to the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. So if it's central region, which is Mississauga, Barrie, Orangeville, that kind of area. You can actually email it to the central office and you can get that address online at the landlord and tenant website or you can fax it in there's a fax number you can okay. send it in. and okay. make sure you keep your you know all your documents so if you fax it and make sure you keep your fax confirmation you don't want to get to the board and they say oh by the way you never faxed in the documents yes. oh, i'm sorry yes. here's here's my confirmation i did fax it in yeah. just to cover yourself that that's really really important so that's so, another good point howard is that yeah. once you serve the tenant with this yeah. paperwork yeah. you have to send all this paperwork to the board it right. has to be somewhere i remember when i was doing it years ago i mean and and um, i don't have any problems with my tenants now so i don't have i've gotten away from all of this but i remember my paralegal said you now you need to go and uh, get the certificate of service and drop it off here because that's how it used to be right no, no, we, no, no you can follow so you can you can actually yeah. It's a lot different than years ago. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. But I mean, there's still a lot of problems with the system, which I'm not going to, that's for another day. That's for, <laughs> yes. But what I'm saying, so, so they'll, and they'll, they actually prompt you online, you know, upload this document, whatever you have okay. included, you need. It's actually a real, relatively good system. Good. It's not perfect, good. but it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. So, Fantastic. and certificate of service. And again, you can't, do any of these documents until your N4 matures after the 19 or 20 okay. day or the, the 14 or 15 day, but it, it'll tell you. It, it It's actually, the system's pretty good. So good, make, make good. Time. So. Okay, good, good page, point. Where do we go now? <laughs> page, page two, okay. Okay. And again, I'm sorry, I can't, you'll okay. see, this talks about the amount of rears that are owed. So the first part is the rental period from what one date to the next date. So let's uh -huh. say, this month so it's the you know the first of april to the 30th first uh, of june sorry first of june to the 30th of june well you got to make sure because it tells you 
day, month, year. So you put the day, which is today mm -hmm. is the whatever day Ten. it is. Tenth. But no, no, but no, but not, not today's date. So the rental period. So the rental period runs from the first. Oh, I see. Okay, that good point. See, I made a mistake there, right? That's a good point. Okay. First to the thirtieth. Okay. Then it says rent charge, so two thousand dollars. So, and then the next thing is rent paid. Again, I know you can't see this, but you'll look mm -hmm. online. Rent paid. So let's say they paid a thousand of the two thousand. The balance is a thousand dollars, and that's the total that goes at the bottom here. Yeah. But Let's say you're not a landlord that's taking care of this too quickly, that you a, a bunch of months have gone by. It actually gives you three lines here. So let's say three months have gone by. Mm -hmm. So you know, April, May, June. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, if it's paid on the first. But let's say four or five months has gone by and you haven't served an N4. So you can actually, and people are like, oh my God, there's only three lines. Well, it doesn't really matter because you can actually, so on the first line, so let's say it's five months. So we go from like the 1st of March mm -hmm. until the, the 31st of May. Okay, and, good point. And then, you know, if it's three months, the total mm -hmm. here on rent rent charged is $6,000, not 2000 Rent paid 1000 balance five. And then exactly, you go to, to the next month's down, like, you know, June, July, whatever it might be. A big problem that happens with this form, we'll get to the next lines in a second, uh, very common is, is that when the rental period doesn't run from the fir first of the month to the end, end of the month, because people mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm going to be a smart guy, let them in on the 5th, so I'll start mm -hmm. the rental period from the 5th and get the rent paid on the 5th every month. Yeah. That's great if everything's running smoothly. Yes. A huge error is if the, the tenant hasn't paid the rent, well, what does the rental period run from? It runs from the 5th. Mm -hmm. Fourth, mm -hmm. long, okay. from the fifth to the fifth. No, it runs from the fifth of the month. The last day of the rental period is the fourth. Or if it's the fifteenth okay. of the month, it runs from the fifteenth to the fourteenth. So okay. I, I actually beg my landlords all the time: do me a favor, please have the rental period run from the first. And they'll be like, "Well, they moved in on the fifth. You know, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. so you just you charge them the rent from the fifth to the, the mm -hmm. end of the month, or if you're going to waive that amount or whatever you might want to do." Start the rental period because it's on the lease. Start mm -hmm. first because that again is such a common mistake where people make screw it up. Sorry to use that language, but they <laughs> screw it up, and, and 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 that's wrong on the form. So that's another mistake that comes up at the landlord and tenant board. Happens mm -hmm. all the time, all the yeah. time. Make Good sure, point. And, and and make sure that uh, when you file the date, and like I said, it has to be the date after when we went to the first place. Pay this amount by. So let's say it was paid by. You have to pay everything by the fifteenth of June. You mm -hmm. can't file the application earliest until the sixteenth of June. Okay. So one point I didn't bring up, and I apologize okay. at the mm -hmm. beginning. So when can you serve this form? Okay. When can you start the N four process? So let's mm -hmm. say uh, your rental period starts from the first of June. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to pay by June first. It doesn't mean you can serve them a notice on June the first. The earliest day would be June the second. That's the earliest that you can serve this form because that's technically at 12.01, you know, on, on June the 2nd is they're now rent is overdue. And they have, you know, they have the entire day of June the 1st in which to pay the rent. But mm -hmm. if they have paid it by the 2nd, that's when you can serve this. Mm -hmm. And I suggest serve it as quickly as possible. Yes. They pay I, with, agree. I if, agree. If they pay it before you file to the landlord and tenant board, they pay the full amount. Well, you just throw this away. And if they give you an argument, why are you serving me this? You don't trust me. You know what? As you mentioned, it business, is business. It's a business. Don't take it I personally. Because I have to cover myself, etc. You know, yeah. you may give them a couple of days grace and they say, well, give me a couple more days. But mm -hmm. even after you file the application to the board, so you file the application to the board and, you know, you don't get a hearing for two, three, four, five months. Mm -hmm. If everything that's due, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, I filed this in January and, you know, by March 31st, they've actually, their balance is zero. You now have to cancel the hearing. They mm -hmm. will they'll owe you the filing fee. And I don't mm -hmm. think you should go all the way to the landlord and tenant board and ask for the $175. Mm -hmm. you don't waste a day. And you're not going to hire somebody to go collect $175 or $190 for you. And by the way, as of July 1st, the rates go up another of five. Of course. Yeah. Of course. 
They actually did do that. It was supposed to be in April, but they delayed it till July. So that we'll get back to the second page. Okay. And you'll see who signs it. I'm so, I'm so bad at showing this. Landlord yeah. representative. So check off landlord, put your name there, your first name, your last name. And as we mentioned on page one, even though it there may be 12 landlords, only one of you has to sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Representative. It doesn't mean your buddy Bob. It means mm -hmm. a legal representative. Mm -hmm. Or if if it's uh, a, a landlord that's you know a huge corporation like Simcoe County, it's somebody that you know works for Simcoe County. They're representative. So you know, Mary works at Simcoe County. She only takes care of these properties. We won't get into the whole you know you know who can represent at a board again. That's yeah. another conversation. So yeah, and then another. I keep on saying really important, but everything's really important. Mm -hmm. The signature line. Okay. It says signature and date. So the signature can't be, oh, I'm going to change, I'm going to save myself some time. I'm going to do everything on a computer. And you just print your name there by computer. Mm -hmm. Well, if you print your name there 99 times out of 100, it will get tossed by the adjudicator and say, no, it has to be signed in ink yeah. by that person. Sure. And the date. Yeah, and good point you brought up before. So let's say I signed it today mm -hmm. but didn't serve it tomorrow until, until tomorrow. Well, the yeah. date of tomorrow's thing will have to be, you know, today's date is the 10th, but I didn't mm -hmm. serve it or mail it until the 11th, mm -hmm. which is another good reason to, you know, give yourself a couple of grace days grace period. As an example, let's say, you know, you've got all your N4s, you're going to actually deliver it to the, 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 the tenant or you're mm -hmm. going to mail it, you have it in your car. And then, you know, life happens, you forget. Sure. And then day it's like, oh, my God, I've got all these things to serve, and I let, left myself tight. You know, I did it the 14 or 19 days. All those N4s, and you know, are now void because you haven't served it on that date. That's why I say yeah. give yourself a couple of days grace period. The last part, mm -hmm. here, representative information, if applicable. Well, if you're a landlord, you don't need to put your information in there. If you're a legal representative, you have to put your information in there because it tells you, you know, who's helping you with this. I mean, even though you may get a, 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 a legal representative like myself to help you out with the N4 notice, if you feel confident enough, and I actually encourage landlords, again, I'm strange that way. I, 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 I'd like to pay people money. If you're confident enough that, you know, at least I've got this off my chest, I can explain to you what the process is at the landlord and tenant board, and you feel confident enough, as long as all your paperwork is fine, mm -hmm. it's relatively straightforward at the board. You know, if you feel, well, you know what, I can't really afford for you to go to the board, but if you can help me with the paperwork, that's fine. So then, they're, you know, it's not like they're going to question, oh, my God, you're a legal representative. And the same thing happens uh, with the... Uh, L1 application when you file it. So let's say I help somebody and it happens all the time. I help mm -hmm. them with the N4. Yeah. Help file the L1 and my name's still on the documents. Mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, if I don't show up at the board, but the landlord is there, that's fine. But only myself or the landlord can be there. You mm -hmm. just send a friend to represent any of the parties. And like I said, that'll be a conversation for another day who can represent mm -hmm. it. Yes. It yes. Really point. That's a so, really good point. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and, and again, if, Maria, you own a house with Bob. Mm -hmm. You signed the N4, but Bob is listed as one of the landlords. Well, you're busy that day, but Bob can go. Mm -hmm. well, Bob can go because he's because they're going to ask you, you know, how are you related to this mm -hmm. company? Signing mm -hmm. off, blah, blah, blah. They're going to ask, the adjudicator will ask you that question. Unless mm -hmm. it's somebody that the adjudicator knows really well. But yeah. even still, they ask. Even though most, pretty well, all the areas in Ontario, the adjudicators, they, they pretty well all know me. They know I'm a paralegal. They'll mm -hmm. still ask me mm -hmm. each of the files that I'm on, and I may be on five or six that day. They'll ask me to introduce myself, let's be yes. with the law society, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and for each, same thing with the landlord. They're going to ask you the same, mm -hmm. give you the name, what's your association with the company. And the thing is, if you don't have certain standing at the board, mm -hmm. don't send a real estate agent there, don't send your buddy there. It, it, it will be tossed or adjourned because... Mm -hmm. Because so you don't want to make that mistake. So make sure your forms are done correctly. Make sure it's filled out properly. And again, as I suggested last week, and even the last time we spoke a number of months ago, if you have a question, please reach out to me. Please call me, email me, please text me, whatever. It's really important. 
if I if I can direct you to do stuff yourself, I'm happy for you. If you don't feel confident to do it and you want me to review something for you, I'm happy with that too. I just want to make sure that you go in the right direction because the worst thing I see is literally every single time I attend the landlord and tenant board, people do the forms themselves and legal, legal representatives have gotten the forms wrong too. But you, you go to the board and it's the worst thing. You cringe when people go up there and the adjudicator has to say to them, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're going to have to start over again. And then yeah. the screaming and yelling starts. It's like, oh my God, I'm out seven months rent of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Have to all over and be like, I'm sorry. Oh my God. I and, it, and the other excuse that they, they use is I called the landlord and tenant board, the 1-800 number. And I kind of explained to the people and they say, this is how you do it. And they're like, well, they're not a legal representative. Yeah. The word, and I don't care who it is. And then they get frustrated. And you don't want to be frustrated. So if you're out six months now and you have to start all over and it's 12 months at the end of it, yeah, you're in deep trouble. I, mean, I hope yeah. it's, it's That's why I say it's dangerous now to be a landlord. This is not a joke anymore. Yeah. So we're going to close off right now, Howard. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for going into detail. If we have any questions, if anyone has any questions, how can they get a hold of you, Howard? So the best way, I mean, they can email me, but there's two different ways. So my phone number is 705-722. 1971 and you can either email or text me or call me at that number or if you want to email me my address is info info at tavroges legal exactly how my name is spelled t-a-v-r-o-g-e-s-l-e-g-a-l so one word dot com so info at tavroges legal dot com Thank you so much, Howard. Fantastic. So we were discussing today how not to get your end form thrown out at the landlord and tenant board. And uh, Howard's gone right through the whole form, step by step. And if there's other things that we've missed because we can always miss something, please send a message to Howard. I know he's very, he's very, very helpful to my association members. And I really appreciate that, Howard. And you've been in this business a long, long time. And you've been on both sides, which is right is really good right i mean that's what we need we need to see both sides of right. this problem so if you're not going to take this seriously you shouldn't even be in the in, in the real estate business guys because this is one thing that you need to know about the n4 so i thank you howard camp roaches is a licensed member of the law society of upper canada in 2006 he started at the community of legal clinic at simcoe halliburton kawartha lakes he was tenant duty counsel at the Leonard and Tenant Board between 2008 and 2013. So he's a fantastic resource of information. So I say thank you very much, Howard, for being my guest. We will see you next week, same yeah. time. <laughs> all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. This is Maria Recruit, All Things Real Estate. And we were discussing about the end for today. So by all means, watch my show. I have a show every single day from Monday to Friday, starting at 3 o'clock. And I have another guest coming on next. So we will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye now. Happy investing. Bye, everyone.